Point. Rain crowds still hang over Assen, but everyone has decided to start on slick tyres. And there in the middle of your picture, Barry Sheen. Barry Sheen, who was second fastest in practice, just a fraction slower than Kenny Roberts. And alongside him, bike number 10 in the blue, Suzuki being wheeled out of the picture, Franco and Cheney. Barry Sheen looks pretty calm and confident. This is very much a crunch race for Barry. He is currently third in the World Championship with 36 points. Roberts and Incini lead it with 48 points. And Barry, if he, needs, if he wants to stay on terms with those two, has got to win today if he's going to have a chance of winning his third World Championship title. Kenny Roberts already has three World Championship titles to his name, of course, but lost it last year to Marco Lucanelli. Bike number three is the unique Yamaha V4 of Kenny Roberts. Barry Sheen is on the slightly earlier model, still 1982 model, Square 4 Yamaha. Moncini, just getting off his bike, is on a four-cylinder Suzuki. Also on the front row of the grid, Graham Crosby on another Yamaha, exactly like Barry's. On the second row of the grid, Jack Middleberg, Freddie Spencer on the Honda, and Cork Ballington on the Kawasaki. We're just seconds to go now. The traditional push start here at the circuit, which first hosted motorcycle racing back in 1916 and the push who's going to strike up first she's got a very good start Barry Sheen has made a magnificent start but it's Uncini first Cork Ballington looks as if he was in for third place but definitely Franco Uncini has been Italian is leading Barry Sheen in fourth place going through the picture 36 motorcycles amongst them other British runners like Steve Parrish Ron Haslam on the four stroke Honda but going into the first corner Kenny Roberts comes down the inside. Franco Ancini is second. Third is Barry Sheen. And Kenny Roberts takes the lead. There is Barry. Right behind Barry is Randy Mamola, who made an excellent start. Randy from the fourth row of the grid, finally getting his act together after an absolutely disastrous season. Virginio Ferrari, the other HB Suzuki rider near the back, I noticed just three from the back. But it is Kenny on the V4 Yamaha, who has made a storming start. The true professional Kenny Roberts beating at the moment by two lengths. Franco and Cini, and let's look at the start again. And just watch Uncini on the blue one. Pushes hard. Five, six, seven steps. It's just about Barry Sheens has already fired up and he's away. So Barry Sheens bike fired quicker but uh, Uncini certainly rocketed off the line as well. Graham Crosby didn't make such a good start. Haven't noticed where Graham is yet. Well, there is Kenny Robertson. Of course, they'll all be hoping and praying they aren't going to have a shower of rain, but the rain clouds are still hanging here at uh, Assen, the uh, town that became famous not for this motorcycle racing, but for uh, the famous train siege. Kenny Roberts and Genie have pulled out a little gap over Sheen, Mamola, Ballington. Burke Van Dorman looked well up, the uh, darling of the local crowd. Van Dorman, Genie looks good, he's going to try and take the lead. Barry definitely in third place. No, Roberts on the V4 Yamaha, 30 years old from Oakdale, California. See the four exhaust pipes very clearly at, on Kenny's V4. But Barry in third place, second fastest in practice. Set a 100 mile an hour lap in practice, as did Kenny Roberts. Franco Ancini is undoubtedly a revelation of the 500cc World Championship this year. He uh, was a privateer until this year, and when Marco Luccinelli decided to go over to Honda, Roberto Galina, who runs the Suzuki Italia team, hired Franco Ancini, and he's actually taken like a duck to water to being a works rider. Had been the top privateer before, he didn't deserve the ride, although last year was a pretty bad one for him, but previous seasons he'd really shown his skill. Very unlatin like is Mancini. Uh, doesn't get too excited. Keeps his head about him. And now just ending lap number one with Kenny Roberts in the lead. Marachine in a strong third place. Mancini second. The three top riders in the world championship in the top three position. But the order, Kenny Roberts, who you saw in the lead, is still in the lead. Franco Ancini is in there, so is Middleburg, so is Sheen. Freddie Spencer, who moved up into fourth place briefly, has dropped back. And remember, they're all on slick tyres, and the rain has just come down about two laps ago. This is lap number seven, halfway, almost halfway through the race. 
And Middleburg's gone into the lead. Uncini now takes second from Kenny Roberts. The positions have been changing all around the circuit. The wheel, you see, coming into the picture now. Is that a Kenny uh, Barry Sheen in fourth place? It's absolutely anybody's race. They've got to be so careful with the 125 brake horsepower through the back wheel. Just too much throttle. And they'll be off in a trice. Well, the Dutch fans don't mind the rain, they're loving it because their hero, Jack Middleberg, is second, Franco and Genie is second. Barry Sheen was trying around the outside, didn't quite make it. Barry Sheen has made it, got past Kenny Roberts. Very difficult, very tricky conditions. Now, the organisers may decide to stop this race. The last time he had a real downpour in a, a Grand Prix, the race wasn't stopped and certain people came in to change tyres. There was total confusion. And there you can really see the rain bouncing off the track. Or well, maybe the right and Kenny Roberts is down. Kenny Roberts is down. Barry Sheen goes around. Look at Kenny sliding, sliding, sliding. And uh, Kenny gets up and he's going to be very angry. Well, that certainly leads, loses him the lead of the World Championship now. Now, Kenny is running. What's Kenny seen? Maybe his bike's caught fire or something's on the track. Oh, yes, his bike's caught fire. The V4 Yamaha's on fire. Kenny bravely tries to push it away. Marshalls are with him. The petrol has gone onto the track. There's petrol on the track. There's a piece of exhaust pipe. Well, that shows the brave man that Kenny Roberts is, and uh, that is one of only about two V4 Yamahas that have ever been built. But uh, the fire extinguishers are there very quickly. you hear the crowd actually clapping, Kenny. And Barry Sheen still in third place. Well, on slick tight, I just don't believe this. I'm surprised they can really carry on, but uh, Jack Middleberg has pulled away a little bit. Jack Middleberg having a guest ride on the Suzuki. One of Randy Mamola's spare bikes, in fact. Randy's not going to like this. Now they're coming through the chicane ever so slowly. Well, the motorcycle rules do not... Uh, oh, there you see Graham Crosby's bike down. So Graham Crosby is off. And where is Graham? Well, Steve Parrish just went through the picture. Well, Kenny's walking towards uh, Graham Crosby's bike. But if they can just stay on, they may put the flag up. We'll just have to wait and see. There is... Uh, oh, and just look at the wobble. Look. Uncini, who is the uh, rider's representative, uh, is in third place, and he'll be wanting them to stop the race. Well, a complete downpour, but no, they're carrying on. And uh, Jack Middleberg has a... almost comes off. Well, it's virtually impossible to stay on in the, on these slick tyres. Jack Middleberg, Franco Uncini, Barry Sheen still in third place. You can see all the uh, umbrellas up there. Uncini. Trying down the inside, and there's somebody going down the road. That looks like Freddie Spencer's Honda, number 12. Can't see where Freddie is, but that is definitely his Honda. Well, dear, oh dear me. And, uh, well, Jack Middleberg takes a very leisurely look round his shoulder and says to uh, Riders' representative, uh, Franco and Chini, what are they going to do about this? A yellow flag is waving. That's probably to signify the Freddie Spencer action. And honestly, I think they should stop this. It's just impossible in modern day racing to ride on these slick tires. And this is not uh, the safest of circuits, the Van Drenth circuit in Assen, uh, particularly this section. A lot of trees, as you see, and they have indeed stopped it. The red flag is out, and they have put the checkered flag out as well. Well, we'll have to wait and see if they're going to have a rerun. Well, so the riders will be pleased to see that. Of course, uh, this man, Jack Middleberg, doesn't know that that flag's out yet until he gets around the other side of the circuit. 4.77 miles, remember, this circuit. And so he's got another minute and a half racing in these absolutely atrocious conditions. Well, what a tragedy for the Dutch Grand Prix. It uh, offered so much with uh, Kenny Roberts, Sheen, Mancini, Middleberg, all in there. Well, let's hope that none of those riders we saw fall uh, have been injured. Uh, we know that Roberts has gone down the road. We know he's all right. Uh, Crosby has crashed. Freddie Spencer has crashed. And, uh, well, the spectators probably know it's been stopped because they've heard it on the PA system. But, uh, Jack Middleburn, the machine is still in the picture. Barry Sheen, we hope, is still upright. Yes, he is. Uh, just cruising on bike number seven on his John Player special. And uh, bike number four. Is Jack Middleburg. So with the rain coming down, we hand back to Dickie Davis and the race, of course, Dickie is stopped.
Well, chaos and confusion here at Assen, as you see. The Honda mechanics are working in the pits, and somebody doesn't want us to see that. Well, the jury are meeting currently. They are deciding what to do. It looks they'll probably have a rerun. There's still thunder and lightning here. Uh, quite amazing, the end of the race. In fact, as the uh, as the car, the bikes came up to uh, the end of the race, Franco and Cini nipped in front of Jack Middleburg. So the final order was uh, Franco and Cini first, second Middleburg, third Sheen. But I don't think that's going to count. Another part of the chaos was they literally ran out of ambulances. So many people fell off, and several uh, riders who didn't look too badly injured were stretched back. But with that report, back to you, Dicky, in the studio. Well, the riders are preparing themselves on the grid for the restart, Dicky. And in fact, the previous race up to the sixth lap will count, and they're going to add the two races together to get an overall winner. Well, that could be a little confusing, but at the moment, the big news is that Kenny Roberts has managed to get his bike going again, will be taking part in the second race, and of course, he won the first race, in, in effect, because he fell off after the sixth lap. Well, there you see them on the grid. Uh, there's still dampness around the track. Some riders still deciding what tyres to start on. Barry Sheen is in third place. Uh, must have a very good chance, Dickie, so uh, we'll be watching out for this restart. And back to you in the studio. Well, there's still controversy here at Dassam because uh, the start should have first happened at half past. Now they said quarter two, and they're still, uh, well, not on their bike set. You see Jack Middleburg, the Dutch rider, is actually classified fourth in the uh, first part, still not on his bike. Uh, most of the argument is about whether riders who crashed after the flag was put out should be allowed to restart. Now, that affects people like Freddie Spencer, Kenny Roberts, uh, and so on. Now, let's just go down the order that was originally uh, the order at the end of six laps, which is the way they're going to count this. Uh, Kenny Roberts was in the lead at that time. Frankie Uncini was in second place. Barry Sheen was third. Jack Middleburg, you see in the picture there, was fourth. Uh, then came Freddie Spence in fifth place, although he later fell off. Uh, sixth was uh, Randy Mamola. The seventh was Graham Crosby, although he fell off also. So, Roberts has won Argentina and Spain so far. Austria and Italy were run by Uncini. Barry Sheen has had three second places, and the only other man to win so far this year has been Michel Fritschke, and he won the French Grand Prix, but that was boycotted by all the leading riders. Well, there you see number 10 uh, on the grid is Franco Ancini. Barry Sheen there, number 7, and uh, in the background is Kenny Roberts on bike number 3. Just two minutes to go now before the start, the restart. Uh, and so we see uh, the 10 second board perhaps that is but let's go back now to Dickie Davis in the studio yes Dickie just 10 seconds now to before they are off for the second time in this Dutch 500 cc Grand Prix Barry Sheen pushed his bike a little further back Ken Fletcher actually run on, ran on and wiped his mo uh, visor but now they are off let's see who fires first Barry Sheen's better superb stop Barry Sheen in for the lead somebody else coming through very quickly look like Middleburg Barry Sheen made an excellent start, and it is definitely Barry Sheen. There still is a bit of water about. You can see the spray coming off the bikes while they go down towards the middle deep corner where they drop down into first gear. And it is Barry Sheen determined now to stamp his mark on the Dutch Grand Prix. But now coming down on the inside is Jack Middleburg. And Jack takes the corner. Jack Middleburg jumping Jack in the lead from Barry Sheen in third place. Didn't quite see who that was, but Franco Cini was in fifth place. A few wobbles there, Andy Hoffman going through the picture. Uh, Graham Crosby, I think, is still back in the race, but well down. An extraordinary sight as we see bikes on the motorway above the uh, riders, but Barry Sheen is second place behind Jack Middleburg, the Glazier from Holland, and we'll see the start again. So just watch Barry on bike number seven. Yes, he jumps, throws his leg over the bike and gets an excellent start. Jack Middleburg also came through well. Barry on the red, black and white Yamaha. The OW60 model takes the lead, but he held the lead only briefly. But I suspect that he will be charging hard to get past Jack Middleburg again. This is the first lap of the restart. Remember, this race is now 10 laps. Two races will be added together. There is Middleburg, there is Sheen. Cautiously after that fall. The Middleburg machine have broken away from the rest. Just caught a quick flash in the third and fourth. And it looked like Randy Mamola in fourth place. 
Randy getting his confidence back after those, those series of mishaps in previous Grand Prix. And just look how close Jack Middleburg's knee gets to the ground as he takes that right-hander. He knows and respects Barry Sheen as a fierce competitor, and isn't it good to see Barry Sheen so well up again this year? Sheen, after that brilliant ride in Argentina, one of his best ever races, was just picked to the post there by Kenny Roberts. Randy Mamola, I think I saw him moved up into third place, just off the picture. Barry tying a slightly different line there. He's won this race before, he knows the track, in fact, uh, he has told me in the past that Aston is his favourite racing circuit. Well, it will definitely be his favourite after today if he can win this one. Coming round for the end of the first 4.77 miles that constitute the first lap. Jack Middleburg on bike number four. Barry Sheen on bike number seven. Jacks his weight across the bike. Into that tight right-hander. Down to second gear. Accelerates out. Into the chicane. where Jack Middleburg passed the new pitch complex. The Dutch fans waving and cheering, all 140,000 of them, and they really have pulled away for the rest of the field. Barry Sheen in second place. Now, will Barry try at this first gear corner after the left sweeper to take the lead? Franco and Cheney looks as if he's moved up to third place. And there is uh, Court Ballington in fifth. Kenny Roberts, Graham Crosby, and the rest going through the field, Mark Fontana. There is Marco Lucanelli, the world champion. Marco on the three-cylinder Honda. Doesn't look as if Freddie Spencer took the restart. Ron Haslam just going through the picture on the uh, four-stroke Honda. Philip Coulon also in there towards the back. Or well, Barry Sheen hounding on this second lap. Jumping Jack Middleburg. Definitely the hero of these fans. Well, this is a very nasty section here where they sweep right, left, and then take this sweeping right-hander, the Ossen Broken Corner. Now, is Sheen waiting to pounce, or is he going to play a waiting game? Well, the fans are cheering Jack Middleburg, but they are also cheering Barry Sheen. Barry Sheen, very popular here. If he keeps it in tight, he might just be able to snap it out of there quickly and get the power down. And Jack Middleburg almost loses it. Barry Sheen definitely on the limit as well. Franco and Cheney in third place. Fourth, it looked like Randy Mamola. And Sheen trying again on this second lap. Trying to get past Jack Middleburg, the local hero. Jack Middleburg, the man who has been lent just for this one race. Factory Suzuki and will Suzuki keep him in the squad? I rather suspect after a performance like this they will. Just pops a little wheelie. Barry pops a little wheelie. Drinks it over right. Watching all the time for those damp patches where if you turn the power on the 125 brake horsepower so too quickly with a twist of the wrist, then you'll be off over the bubble and into the hay bales. But Barry Sheen is too experienced for making a mistake like that, but Jack Middleburg isn't! And Jack Middleburg is down the road, he looks as if he's all right. Jack Middleburg just put the power on too quickly. And, oh dear, look at the fans, and they're clapping him. Well, Jack Middleburg made a mistake there, and he's off, uninjured, and Barry Sheen into the lead, and there is Barry Sheen, as we complete this second lap, swooping through the corners on his Yamaha. And let's look at Sir Jack Middleburg just taking that ball again. Barry hounding him. In slow motion, we see Jack on the HB Suzuki. And there, high-sided, it went over the top. The bike just missed him. Jack fell around the road. Barry's on the brakes hard. But fortunately, Jack goes away off the track. Well, maybe Jack Middleburg won't get that uh, Suzuki ride after all. So excitement here at the Dutch TT, Barry Sheen in the lead. And with that news, let's go back to you, Dickie Davis, in the studio. Second gear for Barry Sheen. Barry Sheen leading from Franco and Cheney. Franco and Cheney keeping a watching brief, but seemingly unable to really challenge Barry. Barry will know from his pitch signals exactly where Cheney is, just two seconds in the van. 
but Will and Genie make a late charge. This is lap seven of the ten in this second part. And Barry, of course, needs to pull away as much as he can from Mancini because it looks as if they're going to have to add the times together to get uh, a final result. And uh, hopefully Barry's pits are telling him that. And Genie knows he doesn't have to overtake Barry to win. If he can finish on Barry's back wheel, that's good enough. But it looks as if this time Barry has pulled away a little bit. Graham Crosby in third place. Being challenged now by Kenny Roberts. So we've got a Yamaha, a Suzuki, two more Yamahas. And indeed three more Yamahas because Poop Van Dolman is after Kenny. And Kenny really trying hard to get past Graham Crosby for third place. Graham, the Kiwi, you see his bike patched up because he too took a tumble in the first uh, rain stop to race. Kenny also took a tumble. I still think there'll be quite a bit of arguing about this afterwards, the fact that uh, riders were allowed to recontinue after they crashed. There'll be a lot of reading of the rule books and maybe the odd protest to the FIM. But uh, at the moment, what we're interested in is the out action out on the track, not the action in the uh, FIM jury. And it is still Barry Sheen leading from Franco and Cheney. Then this pair, Graham Crosby, the New Zealander, on his Agostini Yamaha. And in fourth place, that is Kenny Roberts on bike number three, the unique V4 Yamaha. Seven laps completed now. Graham Crosby in third place, crosses the line in front of his friend and rival from the America, Kenny Roberts. Fortunately, the rain has held off in the second part. The rain which caused such chaos in the first. And the fans are waving Boot Van Dorman on as he battles with uh, Cork Ballington, the Rhodesian, who became a South African champion. There's Boot Van Dorman. Cork Ballington with the green meanie 500 Kawasaki. Takes a look behind him, sees Randy Mamola and Mark Fontan. Then, despite that little incident, Takazumi Katayama is still in eighth place. Through the sweeping tree line Mandike section again. Up to about 140, 150 miles an hour. Cranking it right through the awesome broken corner. Then down towards the Beanslang. Has overtaken Barry Sheen. Well, what a disappointment for the British fans. And Sheen is first of pulling away from Barry Sheen. I don't know if Barry Sheen had a moment. We didn't see it on camera. But it is definitely and Sheen, the new leader. The caption confirms it. Franco and Sheeny looking for his third win of the season. Takes another look behind Barry Sheen. Pops a wheelie. And a lot of smoke coming from Mancini's bike. Saw a puff of blue smoke. Is Mancini in, in problems? Well, he's still got his head tucked well under the bubble. Franco Mancini won two Grand Prix already this year. Will all this be his third? Well, he takes another hasty look behind him. There is Franco and Cini. Well, if Franco wins this one, he will indeed be the winner overall. Kenny Roberts with a first, and it looks like a third place. Franco and Cini will have a first and a second, which will give him the overall victory on points. Franco and Cini on the bike number 10. The blue Roberto Galina prepared Suzuki. Galina certainly knows how to prepare these machines. He produced a world champion before in Marco Lucanelli, and it looks as if he's going to produce another one in Franco and Cini. But uh, Graham Crosby certainly giving Franco a, a chase. Franco and Cini crosses the line and wins it. So Franco and Cini is the winner. Graham Crosby in second place. <laughs> Kenny Roberts comes on for third. And look at Barry Sheen. Is this Barry Sheen? Can Barry make fourth place? Yes, Barry Sheen just makes fourth place.
Well, in fact, after the uh, two races have been added together and the points totals have been added together, Andrew Manick really did get his sums right eventually because the winner was Franco Uncini. In second place was Kenny Roberts. And third was Barry Sheen, although he was fourth in that uh, final race there. The World Championship after six rounds. Franco Uncini leads now, a clear lead of three points over Kenny Roberts in the Yamaha. And Barry Sheen is in third place, also on the Yamaha, of course, with...